Welcome back everyone to That Nintendo Show. Uh, before we get started, I want to give a special shout out to all of the new subscribers that have joined the channel. It seems like a lot of people really are interested in Pokemon Legends ZA. It seems like a lot of people are interested in that game, myself included. You guys have shown a lot of support for the video that I put out a few days ago, uh, discussing the trailer and reaction to everything with my friends. We're so heartened to see all of the people that have come out to watch that video and it brings us a lot of joy to see that. So again, thank you for that. And also, I'm a little bit late, but happy birthday to the Nintendo Switch and uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild releasing on uh, March 3rd, 2017. So the Switch has been out for seven years now. We're now in the eighth year of Nintendo Switch, which seems like it's a very long time, but that's actually not too uncommon for uh, consoles to be around that long. I still remember that opening moment of Link leaving the cave in Breath of the Wild and you go out onto the plateau and you just really get to see how vast and open that world was whether you agree that it was the direction of zelda games at the time or not it it was just something magical about it uh and there's not very many moments in gaming that really just hit me the same way that that did so again happy birthday switch probably one of my favorite game consoles of all time if only you had gotten a banjo kazooie game you would be the best one yet <laughs> anyways we have a couple of topics to hit up on uh this week Nothing too crazy has happened. We just came off of a Pokemon Presents and a Nintendo Direct partner showcase the past few weeks. So we're kind of in like a, a down period before uh, inevitably it's going to spike back up with more Switch 2 rumors coming around and a potential actual main Direct that could be happening as early as March. But we're not going to speculate on Nintendo Direct rumors today. We'll save that for a video in the future. To get into like our main topics though, there's been a big lawsuit with Nintendo and the emulator company Yuzu uh, that's been making the rounds on the news the past few days. If you're unfamiliar, Yuzu is an emulator platform for PC where people can, you know, obviously emulate Nintendo Switch games and play them in higher frame rates, higher quality, everything on their computer. Which, in my opinion, is something that it's okay to an extent. I don't condone piracy or anything like that. Uh, which is why Nintendo has brought this up in court, or is trying to bring it to court, is they were suing Yuzu because pretty much people were able to pirate over a million copies of The Legend of Zelda of Tears of the Kingdom before the game even came out. So Nintendo is suing them, and they actually settled it outside of court where Yuzu has agreed to pay Nintendo two and a half million dollars uh, and pretty much just shut down everything that they were doing with that platform. That's pretty much like the short end of it. It goes way into more detail. I will have a link in the description if you want to read the entire court filings and everything like that. But pretty much what really got Yuzu in trouble here was that they started a Patreon page where people could pay them money to keep working on this, which no kind of brings it into like a gray area of like, okay, people are getting paid to emulate Nintendo Switch stuff and it's not Nintendo. I kind of get it, but at the same time, it's like, well, this kind of sucks. But I'm also in the camp of the Nintendo Switch is like a modern platform. It's not like emulating NES games or Super Nintendo games that are hard to find or you'd have to pay hundreds of dollars to, you know, buy these games off of eBay or anything like that where otherwise you could just play them on your computer. It's a little bit different. Uh, the part of this that kind of stings though is uh, Yuzu, or the company that owns Yuzu, also worked on Citra, which is a Nintendo 3DS emulator, and Citra is also going down because of this. And with the eShop no longer being available on 3DSs, 3DSs are not as hard to find as other platforms. They did sell a ton of 3DSs, but you know the, the cost of them is still hundreds of dollars. Like, I remember... It's been about a year or two ago, I bought a 3DS XL for $200, which is pretty close to just what it cost whenever it came out. And so, you know, the, the value of that is still through the roof. But it's easier to justify people who want to play 3DS games on their PC versus Switch games. So, I don't, again, don't condone piracy or anything like that. It's a massive gray area for most people. Uh, but Yuzu just decided that instead of even trying to fight Nintendo in court over this, 
that they just agreed to pay them the two and a half million dollars and they're just going to shut everything down. So unfortunate news for those people who've been working on this. So Nintendo strikes down yet another emulator, another company that, that's trying to just, you know, get around Nintendo's policies for buying their games and everything. I would say today's main topic, though, is about Samsung and their new technology that they have on micro SD cards. It was announced a few days ago that Samsung has developed the next generation of SD cards, which bring SSD-like read and write speeds to SD cards, which is going to make things a lot easier for future consoles and everything that use SD cards. So this new generation of SD cards, which they are calling the SD Express, uh, is offering read and write speeds of up to 800 megabytes per second, which for those who are curious, a standard SD card that you can put in your Switch now has an average read and write speed of around 80 to 85 megabits per second. So theoretically, this is just about a 10 times increase in read and write speed for SD cards going forward. Uh, they're going to be launching two different storage capacities um, with this, which is a 256 gigabyte card as well as a one terabyte card. Uh, there's no pricing or anything like this, but there was one interesting thing on here that kind of leads people to believe that Nintendo is somehow involved with this, uh, which is a quote that says, for the first time in the industry, Samsung introduced a new high performance micro SD card based on the SD Express interface. The development was the result of a successful collaboration with a customer to create a custom product. And the only thing that's releasing soon that can take full advantage of this that we're aware of is going to be Nintendo's next generation console. These SD cards are expected to launch later this year, which would line up with the initial projection of when the Nintendo Switch 2 was is supposed to come out. So that means at minimum, if you were to buy one of these cards, you could be adding at, at minimum 256 gigabytes of storage to your new Nintendo console, which is going to be helpful because Nintendo is known to not put a lot of internal memory on their platforms. Uh, take, for example, the Switch OLED, which is their most latest bump in memory capacity, uh, only came with 64 gigs. And I don't know about you guys, but that is enough to put like two or three games on. Uh, when the Switch One first came out, 32 gigs. You could put Breath of the Wild in like one other game on the internal memory before it was completely filled up. Now, kind of like with the initial Switch launch, you know, a 128 gigabyte SD card for the Switch, it would run you about 45 to $50 if I remember correctly. Uh, so I can imagine that these new SD cards are going to cost quite a bit more than the standard ones now, which you can get a 512 gig for about 30 bucks. So maybe it's something you won't need right away, but I would go ahead and probably invest in one before you, you know, run out of memory and go, oh snap, now I have to have one. All right, and in our last bit for today, I was gonna try not to talk about leaks and rumors and stuff. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of make a segment in these videos just to quickly gloss over what the industry is expecting to happen. And this rumor comes from the Reddit thread gaming leaks and rumors, like most good filtered things come from. And pretty much it's talking about Pioro, which is the only like credible leaker for Nintendo right now. Everyone else claims to be a credible leaker, but they seem to get everything wrong and Pioro has a pretty good track record so pretty much it's like okay well if he says something it's kind of on the way of probably happening and this is also kind of just a safe rumor regardless um, and that is that uh, Luigi's Mansion 2 HD and Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door remake are going to get new trailers or new information in some form uh, for Mario Day which is coming up in about five days as of the recording of this video. Yeah, five days. So Mario Day, March 10th, makes sense. Supposedly gonna get new trailers for this. Uh, there's also possibly a Lego collaboration happening this weekend too. Uh, Mario Day is on a Sunday, which is not normally a day that Nintendo goes out of their way to announce things. So it's possible we could get it earlier, as in Friday, or they wait till Monday to do anything, but they can also do it on a Sunday, who knows? But I'm really excited to finally see more gameplay of Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door Remake. Probably the most anticipated game I'm looking forward to for the remainder of this year. Alright, before I let you go, let's go over the results of last week's poll where I asked, are you planning on replaying Pokemon X and Y before Legends ZA releases next year? 
with 67% of you saying yes, you are planning on replaying it. That's exciting. I'm thinking about doing the same thing. Also got it uh, loaded up on my 3DS. Just need to finally commit to sitting down to play it. I also just forgot how awesome the 3DS is. It, it's so much more easy to bring around places than a Switch. Maybe one day in the future we could get a handheld that's about the same size as that because I kind of miss it. But anyway, and then I got a new poll for you to vote on this week, which is what is the minimum amount of storage the Switch 2 should launch with? 64 gigabytes is pretty much the safe bet. So I got that on there. Uh, 128, 256 or 512 or more. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the Switch's internal memory size, what you think it should launch with, and let me know if you are anyway excited about these new SD cards from Samsung and think there's a lot of potential for what could happen with the Switch in there. Uh, make sure you uh, like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you're new to never miss an update about the Nintendo Switch, Nintendo Switch 2, Pokemon Legends, all that stuff, and anything else in the world of gaming as far as Nintendo is concerned. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.